It... it is different. It has been some time. Forgive me, but I need to rest. Go on. The council awaits. I will remain here. Yes, afraid for you. As I always have been, I will be fine here. Whatever answers the council have are for you alone. The journey has been a long one, and I need to center myself. Know that much may happen here, but above all, do not forget this. You may trust in me. We cradle each other's lives, and what threatens one of us threatens us both. And if you find you cannot trust me, trust in your training, trust in yourself. Never doubt what you have done. All your decisions have brought you to this point. And now, perhaps, they shall see what you have become. It is not as it was, but perhaps that is for the best. We were wondering when you would arrive. This moment has taken some time to reach us, and I imagine you have many questions. Or perhaps you've come for revenge. No. We will do as we have done. We will wait. There's nothing else we can do. No, the true threat has yet to show itself. It is waiting for something. Us, perhaps, to enter the war. We have seen their soldiers, the remnants of their fleet. But those are symptoms of a disease. It is more bait to attempt to draw us out. The actual battle is being fought through the force not with weapons of war. It isn't about the Republic anymore. The attack on Onderon. Something was attempting to use the planet itself, to feed on it, to draw on the power there. You prevented it, but it was a stalling measure. The next time will be critical. If Jedi gather, if we wage war against these shadows now, then Jedi will die. And we will die for nothing. Whatever this thing is, it must be fought by those strong in the Force. It cannot be fought in any other way. It knows this, and that is why it is killing us. If we die, then it will win, no matter what fleet or weapons are brought against it. I see you have failed to grasp the nature of the enemy we face. Where Jedi gather, Jedi die. But not just Jedi. All things touched by the Force. The last Jedi Conclave was on Qatar, a Miraluka colony, and all of Qatar was destroyed. All of the Jedi killed. Including Master Zar, Master Vandar. A Jedi doesn't care if he dies. Everyone does. But when we fight, when we sacrifice ourselves, it is for others, for the greater good. But our presence must not endanger others. And as long as we were visible targets, we were a threat to everything around us.
There was a gathering of Jedi on the planet. When we realized that something was attacking us, we resolved to meet secretly to attempt to find this threat. Then, Katar was no more. When we felt Katar die, there is something we felt. Something we'd felt once before. An echo in the Force. We'd felt it before, when you stood before us. Whatever this threat, whatever this hunger is, it is something tied to you. Something you have experienced directly. This echo travels in the places where death has walked, where planets have died. Massacres fuel its power. The death of life fuels it. No, we do not believe so, but it is tied to you somehow. I felt it on Doxon. And it was in the ground at Dantooine. It echoed in the ruins on Korriban. And the wastelands of Telos. We've been trying for years without success. Whatever disturbance in the Force that would cause death on such a scale also clouds it from our sight. It is like a scream in the Force, and finding its source is difficult. It has cast many echoes. So we sought out places touched by the Force, by such events. We went to Dantooine, to Telos, to Doxon. And some of us just left. We thought the enemy might show themselves. They were Sith, that much was certain. But where they were striking from, we did not know. We cast you out of the Order because you followed Revan to war. There was no other reason. No, there was another. You had become different somehow, changed. The war had changed you. You were no longer a Jedi, but we could not tell you why. Some explanations mean nothing unless the one who suffers comes to the answer on their own. What had happened to you was punishment enough, and the Jedi do not kill their prisoners. And if you had stayed, you would have changed us, and that we could not allow. You already know the answer. You've noticed it in those who travel with you. Have you noticed that when you act, others follow? Those that travel with you? There's something wrong here. A disturbance in the Force. They follow you, without question, without hesitation. Against their instincts, and sometimes against their sense. It is because you are a leader, but that still fails to grasp the meaning of what I'm trying to tell you. It is not an easy thing to explain. Surely you are familiar with force bonds. It is the bond that develops between apprentice and master when one truly understands another. It is developed over time through understanding of each other. And yet you do it so easily and we do not know why. You make connections through the Force, and it resonates with those who travel with you. The resonance is even greater when they too are Force sensitive. Your actions affect others more than you know. You draw others to you, especially those strong in the Force. When you suffer, their spirit echoes it. And when they are in pain, their pain becomes yours. We do not know, but it is not the first time you felt the weight of so many lives. And that is why the Mandalorian Wars echo within you still. We did not cut you off from the Force. You were merely deafened to it. Because of that last battle of the Mandalorian Wars. The screams of countless thousands, Jedi and Mandalorians, crushed by the planet's gravity, annihilated. Their lives still scream across the surface of that dead planet. And within you, to hear the Force over such pain, it is not possible. It was too much for any Jedi to endure, and it is a wonder that you did not die there when thousands perished. All those you had fought with and struggled with. You cut yourself off because you had to if you were to survive. You had hints of it in the war on Doxon. Malachor was simply the final blow. <sighs> you were deafened. At last, you could hear. You were broken. You were whole. You were blinded. And at last, you saw. When you returned to us, we saw what had happened. You carry all those deaths at Malachor within you. And it has left a hole, a hunger that cannot be filled. In you, we saw a wound in the Force. In you, we saw the end of the Force. Yes. 
You can feel the force, but you cannot feel yourself. You are a cipher, forming bonds, leeching the life of others, siphoning their will and dominating them. It is the teaching of these new Sith to feed on others, on other force sensitives. They are symptomatic of the wound in the force. You are a breach that must be closed. You transmit your pain, your suffering through the Force. Within you, we see something worse than merely the teachings of the Sith. What you carry may mean the death of the Force and the death of the Jedi. So you think. It is not the strength of a Jedi you feel. He's right. It's all the death you've caused to get here. You feed on it and you grow stronger. You're like Malachor. It's in you, it's what you are now. You must have noticed as you fought across all these planets, killing hundreds, only to become more and more powerful. Why do you think that was? But what's worse is that bonding you have. It hasn't gone away. It's gotten stronger, and the more attachments you form, the more you draw others to you. And that is why you are a threat to us all. You know what the choice is. If you don't warn them, then the Republic will fall. All those countless lives, innocent lives. Or the one. What if other Jedi went to war as you did, suffered the same events and emerged as you did? What if there was a crucible that trained such Jedi to consume and kill? For you, Malachor was that crucible. What's worse is the Sith that we face. I fear that they have learned the lesson of Malachor all too well. It is what allows them to prey on Force users, to become stronger when Force sensitives are near. Somehow they have learned their hunger from you, and so you have brought about the end of the Jedi, and perhaps all the knowledge of the Force. But it is of no consequence. Your ability to make such connections, such bonds, so easily are why you cannot remain. And so you wait, as a shadow. Yes, we are alike that way, blinded one. I would have thought you would walk with her amongst the Jedi. But that is not the way of the Sith, is it? Do not speak to me of the ways of the Sith. You, of all of us, have no conception of what it means to be Sith. You are a threat to living creatures and all who feel the Force. You will lead the Sith here, and that we cannot allow. Our judgment before remains. Exile. You must leave. And you must leave without your tie to the Force. It is a punishment reserved for only a few, and only when necessary. But we have the power to cut you off from the Force, and it must be done. Forgive us, but it is necessary. This must be done. As long as you feel the Force, you are a danger to those around you. Enough! Step away from her. What? Step away! She has brought truth, and you condemn it. The arrogance. You will not harm her. You will not harm her ever again. I thought you had died in the Mandalorian Wars. Die? No. Became stronger. Yes. Is this your new master, Exile? If so, then you follow Revan's path. Her teachings will cause you to fall as surely as he did. She is difficult to see. She's like a shadow of the Exile. We sought to lure the Sith out, and now they have come to us. How could you ever hope to know the threat you face when you have never walked in the dark places of the galaxy, faced war and death on such a scale? If you had traveled far enough, rather than waiting for the echo to reach you, perhaps you would have seen it for what it was. Did you not hear its call on Dantooine Vrook, on its scarred surface and in the minds of the settlers? I have endured your corruption of my other students. You shall not have this one. And you, Kavar, so close to the call of Daxan, tell me, did you not feel what poured from the moon, what had taken place there? 
and Zezkael to hide upon Narshada, yet blind yourself to all that happens there, so close to understanding the Force, so close to giving it up. There is a place in the galaxy where the dark side of the Force runs strong. It is something of the Sith, but it was fueled by war. It corrupts all that walks on its surface, drowns them in the power of the dark side. It corrupts all life, and it feeds on death. Revan knew the power of such places, and the power in making them. They can be used to break the will of others, of Jedi, promising them power and turning them to the dark side. Did you never wonder how Revan corrupted so many of the Jedi, so much of the Republic, so quickly? The Mandalorian Wars were a series of massacres that masked another war, a war of conversion, culminating in a final atrocity that no Jedi could walk away from, save one. And that is what I sought to understand. How one could turn away from such power, give up the Force, and still live. But I see what happened now. It is because you were afraid. As you would pass judgment on her, I have come to pass judgment on you all. Do you wish to feel the teachings born of the Mandalorian Wars? Of all wars, of all tragedies that scream across the galaxy? Let me show you, you who have forever seen the galaxy through the Force. See it through the eyes of the exile. It is done. She is no more. Take me to Atris. She will have the strength to do what the Council cannot. <laughs> 